Oh, iPad. What's up, Strauss? I'm eating an apple, that's what's up. <laughs> Good plan for the morning. morning. <clears throat> morning, Strauss. How are you guys doing today? Okay, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, so I keep forgetting to mention this, so I'm going to mention it straight off uh, the bat. So um, we moved all the AP courses from quarter four into quarter three. So um, for some of you, it's 
going to be a little bit more challenging having all your AP classes in one quarter. Um, make sure that you stay in contact with your, your teachers. Um, you can't, um, you can't like drive yourself crazy trying to get everything done. Um, and we're trying to, as AP teachers, we're trying to keep this in mind. Um, but I do know that, you know, we also feel the pressure to cover all the material and get it all together. Um, my opinion is I'm just going to go at a, at, a, at a reasonable pace and just see where we end up um, because I don't want to just push so much information at you and you don't understand it then. Um, I think that would be a waste of time. Um, and, you know, just, you know, keep in mind, like, you know, when I was in college, I could not keep up with all the work. It was impossible. Um, and to try to keep up with all the work, I would have driven myself crazy. So what I did was I never read a single English book in college. I never got, I was never able to, I would read the first five pages and the last five pages of every chapter. And then I would just continue on. Um, and that's how I got through English in college. Um, I barely had enough time to study my Spanish. So I never got higher than a B in Spanish, but I put all my time and energy into chemistry because I was going to be a chemistry major and I got A's in chemistry. So just realize, you know, you're going to have to, as you go forward, you're going to have to pick and choose where you spend your time and energy. You're not going to be able to do everything perfectly all the time. It's just a recipe for a nervous breakdown. So, and I've been teaching like, AP now for 12 years and I've seen this over and over where students try to do everything and it's just it's it's impossible especially if you have like three and definitely four AP classes it's just it's just too much so um, just a reminder to be gentle to yourselves and you know talk to your teachers frequently and just let them know where you're at okay um, <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen here and see if I can do this the other homework assignment, you're going to have um, two bits of homework tonight. Some homework is going to be chemistry related. And then the other homework is um, updating your picture in Zoom. Because when we start class next week, it'll be helpful for your peers, meaning your fellow classmates, if they know who they're talking to. Because some of you will be in class, some of you will be on Zoom, some of you have never met each other before. So it, it would be helpful. So I'm just gonna show you what I did. So I'm sharing my screen. So you see Zoom and you've got this little corner up here thing. It should be, a, and it just probably has just Nathan, you know, just a blank screen and your name. If you go into profile, then you'll see the bigger thing and it'll just be you know, a, a blank screen with your name on it. Then change it. You can upload a picture. You, you, probably, you might have to crop it um, to get um, it lower than two megabytes. So I had to crop my picture, it wasn't as, as, as big. Um, but I would like you guys to put a picture of yourself in there. You've got a week. Um, cause again, it'll be helpful for your peers to know like, okay, who is this person I'm talking to? Cause, um, it's just, I think a good expectation for zoom. Cause my guess is some of you will still have your cameras off, but at least this way you have a sense of who is this person. Okay. So you got a week to find a nice picture of yourself. All right. I'm going to stop the share. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, a weekend without chemistry. Well, no, you have to read, right, Ethan? That was a trick question. So all of you read those pages slowly, carefully for comprehension.
So when we had stopped, we were just at the point where we could start um, doing homework problems, but we didn't have enough time to go through them. And I just, I knew if I would have assigned the homework problems, all that would have happened was you guys are freaked out and you'd have been emailing me nonstop saying you didn't know what you were doing. So you need to memorize page 574, table 12.6. Okay, all those equations in there, um, you need to memorize. And I will refer back to it over and over again, okay? So if you graph, this is just review, if you graph A versus T and it's a straight line, then you know it's to the zero order. If you graph ln of A and you get a straight line, then you know it's to the first order. And then if you graph one over A versus time and you get a straight line like that, then you know it's to the second order, okay? So we're gonna start with number 37 in the book, okay? And number 37 says, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide was studied and the following data were obtained at a particular temperature. So they don't flat out tell us the equation, but this is it. When hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it turns into water and oxygen. To balance this out, I'm going to need a two there and a two there. Okay. Now they give us the concentration of hydrogen peroxide versus time. And then they give us the um, rate law, the integrated rate law in terms of hydrogen peroxide. And they want us to find the rate law, the integrated rate law, the value of the rate constant and all that stuff. So. Um, this section is titled the integrated rate law. And I'm not going to write out all the data, but because you've got your book in front of you. So the problems you already did were the um, initial rates method, where we did solving a system of equations. We had one experiment over the other experiment, variables canceled. This way, this one, the integrated rate law method of solving, we're going to have to graph. Now, sometimes you might be able to just look at the data and see, okay, is this how much is this decreasing by each time? Here it's decreasing by 0 0.09. How about here? Is it decreasing by the same amount each time? And you also have to look at the time span. See, the time spans aren't the same, are they? That's 120, this is 180, that's 300. Now the time, time intervals are not identical, so we really are gonna have to graph this. So in your graphing calculator, you would type in the data or you can just do a rough graph by hand. So I'm going to graph it for you and just share the answer with you.
So when you graph this, your graph looks something like this. So is, Aiden, is my hydrogen peroxide So is N zero? Uh, no, it wouldn't be. No, because when I graphed A versus T, I did not get a straight line. Tyler, I then graphed ln of A versus T and I got a straight line. Is my rate order one? Yes. Yeah. So now I know the N. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to create another column here and go through and take the LN of A. So I take the LN of one, I take the LN of 0.91. And so on your calculator, there's the LN button. You just Take the ln of it and just work your way down and then you graph your data, okay? So it is time consuming because you do have to graph. Okay, there's no way around this problem, you gotta graph it. So like I said, I'm telling you that if you graph it, it's gonna be ln of A is gonna give you a straight line. So now we know that um, the rate order according to hydrogen peroxide is one. So this means here's my rate law. Okay, I've just done the first part of the problem. I found my rate law. Now they wanna know the integrated rate law. So that's where you'd go to pi, page 574, or you've got it memorized. But on page 574, you'd say, okay, well, what matches with uh, the first order? And that would be this. So there's my integrated rate law, the ln of hydrogen peroxide equals negative KT plus ln of hydrogen peroxide at time zero. That's what that little subscript is, remember? So now I've got my rate law, I've got my integrated rate law. So those are the first two things they asked. And now they said, okay, please find K. All right, so can we use the top equation to find K? No, and the reason why we can't use the top equation to find K, Jackson, is because we don't know the rate. So you can't have two unknowns. We don't know K, we don't know the rate. So we can't use the top equation to find K. You can use the bottom equation to find K because we know everything in here. We know this, we know this, we know this. So you can pick any one of those um, data points. So when I'm looking at my chart up here, I've got time, time, time. I can pick any one of those data points, all right? and you should get pretty much the same K, no matter which data point you pick. So I'm gonna write down my info just so that you know. So I'm gonna pick the biggest time span, 3,600 seconds. My concentration of hydrogen peroxide at that time is 0 0.050. 
What is my initial concentration of hydrogen peroxide? One, and this is molar. I don't know why they always write moles per liter, it's just molar. All right, so we have everything we need. So I'm gonna put LN of 0 0.050. negative K, the time is 3,600 seconds, plus the LN of one molar. Hey, yep. Where are you getting the uh, 0 0.050 molar? So if you look at problem number 37, I said I wasn't gonna write down all the data, but they go all the way down to 3,600 seconds. And it's 0 0.050. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, when we have class, it'll be good to have your book out um, just because it will take me forever to rewrite the problems. But good question. So that's where I got it from. Now, like I said, you could pick any one of these sets of data points, okay? And you should get the same K or at least pretty darn close. So the LN of one is zero, so that's zero. And then a 0 0.05. Now with sig figs, um, I would just, I would, you know, the LN, I would pick about three or four digits. The LN is pretty sensitive. So I would write down at least four digits. I better make my plus signs look better. So the LN of one is zero. You know that from math class. Now, I'm just gonna erase that because we don't need to have a zero in there. Divide both sides by 3,600. Eight point three two times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, I've got a negative sign here, but I also have a negative sign there. So that means my K is 8.32 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. Now, the other thing you could do is remember that K is the slope. or I should say negative K is the slope. So when you put your data into your graphing calculator, your graphing calculator should tell you the slope. So you could just say, okay, I've got my K from the slope because the calculator told it to me, all right? Um, and it's kind of the same thing. Your slope is a negative number, right? So that's how if you have a negative one side and a negative on the other side, it comes out to be positive. Ks are always positive, okay? Now, when I put this back into my equation, When I plug my K back into the equation, there's a negative sign there out in front. So that's where the negative slope comes in. So now I've got my integrated rate law. Whoops, I didn't need to write the K in there twice. There you go. So now I've got this thing all set. So we found the rate law, we found the integrated rate law, we found K. And like I said, you can find K from directly off the slope or you could find K by plugging numbers into the equation. Either one is okay. 
I guess technically speaking, this is a superior way of doing it, but the other way is fine too. And just a reminder, this is the rate law, okay? Technically it's called the differential rate law, but everybody refers to it as the rate law. This is the integrated rate law, okay? What questions do you have before we finish that problem? You think you could have done that problem over the weekend on your own? All right, so the last question in the problem is calculate the concentration of hydrogen peroxide at 4,000 seconds. So again, this is something a chemist would wanna know that as your reaction's proceeding, you're gonna to wanna to know, okay, well, what is my concentration of my uh, reactants as the reaction proceeds? How much is left after 4,000 seconds? Well, which equation do we use? Do we use this equation or do we use this equation? Wouldn't you use the integrated rate law? Yep, we have to use the integrated rate law because Avery, when you look at this equation right there, there's no time in it. Okay, so we can't use that one because we don't know the time. I'm sorry, we, we can't use this one because time is not in there. The bottom equation has time as a variable. So if they give you a time, you've got to use the integrated rate law. So I'm just gonna rewrite the equation for giggles. My time is 4,000 seconds. What's the initial concentration of hydrogen peroxide? We have to go look at our chart. The initial concentration of hydrogen peroxide is right there. So the initial concentration was one molar. So that's why I'm gonna plug one in here. and just have to let somebody in. So ln of one is zero. trying to find the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. So this times this gives me a negative 3.32. Oops, sorry, there's no T in there. Okay. So Ellen, do I gotta let somebody in? All right, so now we're Ellen of hydrogen peroxide equals negative 3.32, all right? So how do you get rid of the Ellen? Okay, so this is called or where your, your um, algebra comes in. To get rid of the natural log, you have to take the exponential of both sides. So that cancels. So now we just have to take the exponential of negative 3.32. So there's an exponential button on your calculator. It comes up to be 0 0.0362 molar. So this is the concentration 
at time 4,000 seconds. All right. Now let's do another one. But we're going to do number 38. And number 38, they bring in a concept called half-life. Half-life just means the time it takes for half of your initial concentration to disappear. So if we were looking at this problem up top, our initial concentration is one molar, right? Here's our initial concentration. The half-life is how much time does it take for it to get down to 0.5 molar. So the half-life is the time it takes for half of your concentration to disappear, okay? So it's nothing, to be honest with you, that's really no different than what we did in problem number 31 or 37, okay. Number 38, a particular reaction, okay? The initial concentration of A is two times 10 to the negative second molar. Concentration versus time data was collected. A plot of ln of A versus time resulted in a straight line with a slope of negative 2.97 times 10 to the negative second. So they are telling us that they already graphed this for us. So if the ln of A, Mike, versus time gives us a straight line, then what is the rate order of A with respect, I mean, what is the rate order with respect to A? Um, is it, it's one, right? Yeah, so if you get an ln of A versus time, a straight line, then you know that it's to the first order. So then we've got our differential rate law all taken care of. The integrated rate law will be this. Now they didn't give us a data table, did they? So how are we gonna find K? Well, they told us the slope. And we know that the slope is equal to negative K. So this is where my slope is negative, right? So therefore my K is positive because I got a negative side on both sides. So then when I plug it in down here, and my initial concentration is written up there. All right, so we are all set. Um, we've got the rate law, we got the integrated rate law, we found K, so we are all good. So this is A, B, find the half-life. So I'm gonna show you two ways to find the half-life. Um, the first way is more specific to the problem. The second way will work with any problem, okay? So if this is our initial concentration, okay, 
we abbreviate it with a little one half right there. So that means half life. So what is half of my initial concentration? It's that, right? So now I can just plug this data into this equation and solve for T. T one half means uh, the half life. So ln of one times 10 to the negative second is equal to negative 2.97 times 10 to the negative second times t plus the ln of my initial concentration. And now we just use our calculator. So I'm going to do get negative 4.61. Right, so we have those. So I'm gonna combine like terms. So I get 23.5. Now units, the units, you have to look at what is um, on your K. And I wasn't very good at writing my units out here, but on your K, if I scroll up here, reciprocal minutes. So that means your time is gonna be in minutes, okay? So my half-life is 23.5 minutes. So that means every 23.5 minutes, half of my sample will disappear, okay? So we don't really get into this a whole lot, um, but you can use the equations Or you can kind of do it um, so I'm just doing a timeline here. So at time zero over here, my concentration was two times ten to the negative second. After twenty three point five minutes, my concentration will now be this. So one half-life has just has gone on. How much will I have after another half-life? So you wanna keep in mind, Zoe, that it halves each time. So to kind of keep it a little bit more understandable, I'm gonna keep it to the negative second power so after another 23.5 minutes, my concentration halves again. How about another 23.5 minutes? After three half-lifes, how much will be left? Uh, how much will be left, Ari, after the third half-life? Yep, 0.25. So every half-life that goes on, it will continue to um, decrease by half, okay? 
Now, let me just tell you the general form for doing this. And this will work for any of the equations. Um, let's start with the first order. And then we'll do zero order. So this, I guess you might want to say this is notes. So what is the relationship Light went off. Come on, go back on, light. What is the relationship between A and A naught? This is one half of A naught, right? So when I've got my rate law written out like this. What I can do is do substitution. Well, actually, we're going to do substitution at the end. Okay. So follow the algebra. This is why you took math. So the first step isn't too crazy. All I did was bring that to the other side. Next step, when you subtract LNs, you are legally able to do this. It's, you can, I'm really trying to make my use lowercase k. There you go. So when you are subtracting LNs, it's the same thing as division. Okay. So I'm just going to give you 10 seconds there to catch up. Now, when I look at the relationship between A and A naught, if I do a little reordering there, that's the relationship, right? There's my ratio. A to A naught is one to two. Because for the half-life, this is for half-life, This is always going to be half of that for half life. So this is where I'm saying this is the generalized equation. Is I can just plug that in one half for that ratio. Then I'm going to undo my division. So just like I took this and turned it into a division, I just undid it. Ln of 1 is 0. I'm left with the ln of negative 2, negative kt. I have a negative sign on both sides. I'm going to divide by k. This is the half-life equation for first order. So 
So initially when I did this problem to find the half-life, this is what we did, right? We plugged it in, plugged in the numbers, boom, that's fine. But you can also find the half-life by just using this equation right here. The ln of two, they told us K. In the problem, they told us the slope and the slope is K. So that's what I'm saying. It becomes really important to memorize um, that, pay, uh, that table 12.6 because I know that K is 2.97. So I will get the same answer and remember when you're taking tests, time is of the essence. So I got the same answer using this equation. as I did using this equation. So it'd be faster using the other one because it's simpler, right? Plus there are less places I could make a mistake, all right? So what questions do you have on number 38? Okay, let's derive the half-life for zero order. So again, it's important to log in on time because if you don't, you miss out. So there's our equation for zero order. Remember that the concentration of A is one half the initial concentration of A naught. So I'm just gonna substitute in. What's one half minus one? So there's the half-life equation for the zero order. It's probably written a little bit nicer like this. So if you want to find the half-life for a zero order reaction, all you got to do is use that. And again, all these equations are on table 12.6. All right, Calder, we got the last one. Let's do the half-life reaction for second order. So we start with this. Now remember, this is the only one where K is positive. Or there's no negative sign in front of the K. A is still one half of A naught. So 
So then I substitute that in. Now, what happens when you're dividing by a fraction? It's the same thing as multiplying by the inverse. So two minus one is one. Divide by K. All right, so now you've got the half-life equations for all three, zero order, first order, second order, okay? Your homework, page 595. So you're just gonna be doing the same thing we did in class. The answers are in the back of the book. Again, I encourage you to work with each other Yeah, no, we can do that one. 41, 43, 45, no, let's not do 41. 43, 45, I promise I won't change it again. 43, 45, 49, 51. Okay, so you have four problems and now we're transitioning into office hours. So I will stay on the line here. So like I said, next week when you're in class, I'll be mingling amongst you, helping you on the homework. Those of you at home will also be getting help with homework. So the expectation is during office hours then you, it's just time to, to start your homework, okay? So I will stay online and I will answer questions as you need them. Okay. By the way, if you were questioning yourself why you're taking this class, here are six reasons why you wanna take chemistry.
Hey, Mr. Strauss, um, how do you plot like the points in the graph on your graphing calculator? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, uh, I don't do this too often. Okay, so do you have a TI? Yeah, I have a TI 84 plus. Okay, so at the very top, there's a button called graph. You see that button that says graph? Uh, yeah. So you have to press second and then that graph button and then a table will come up. Mm -hmm. And then you can enter in the data. Um, so like you would type in for X 100, okay. Okay, so then you type in, um, I, uh, I screwed that up. Don't you have to go to stat? Okay, just kidding. Go to stat. And then edit. There you go, there's the table. So, yep, Nathan's right. You go to stat. And then you have um, your table L1 and L2, and then you can type in your data. Is that that plot? Oh, wait. Oh, I got it. And then which does the uh, concentration fall into? Is that L1 or L2? Um, so let's see, I just got to think. So, Time is X, so concentration would be L2. Now, you can, um, yeah. I wouldn't try doing the exponent. I would just put it in as a decimal because it's to the negative second. So you can just shift the decimal point over two places. Then once you have that, then how do you, oh, stat plot? Are you talking about like, how do you graph it? Yeah, how do you graph it once you have, it, you put your data in? After you put in your info, you just press the graph button. Oh, I didn't give it enough time. He was thinking. I'm used to computers being faster. I didn't show up. Yeah, I don't see it either. Then um, you have to press zoom nine. Zoom, okay, so zoom. Zoom nine because it was probably messed up from a different window equation. Okay, now I see it. So zoom and then down arrow to zoom nine. Now I've got it. Hmm. I still don't see it. Hold on, I can show I think I, I can show you here. Let's 
So maybe, you, uh, no, you can't see that, can you, on the calculator? No. No, it's too dark. So um, when you have stat and then you hit graph, um, press the button that says zoom at the top. Mm -hmm. And then it says on the left side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, keep mm -hmm. scrolling down until it says eight and then nine, and then hit enter on zoom stat. Yeah, nothing is just still. Huh. Um, mine came up. I'm wondering, did you, did you put the data point? Did you enter the data points in? in yeah, I went correctly? to stat, then one, and they're, they're all there. They show up. Is your plot on? Um, plot one is on. I don't know, you might have to go, I mean, on your iPad, there's also Desmos and there's um, graphical analysis. So you could use your iPad to graph them as well. So that is something to keep in mind that you, you don't have to use your calculator to graph. It might be easier to use Excel, graphical analysis or, um, or Desmos. And if you don't have graphical analysis on your, it is in the um, student, uh, keep changing the name on me. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yep. But like I said, you can you can um, use Desmos or you can use go into the app store and download graphical analysis for free. Is it all right if we head out, Charles? You can head out, yeah, whenever you want. Thank you. If you Thank guys you. get stuck, you know, email me. I'll be checking it. Okay. Or we could do office hours in the morning, too. But we'll go through yep. all of these um, in class tomorrow. Thank you, Charles. Take care.